Hi, my name is Andy Parker, owner and head brewer at Elusive Brewing and author of Cameras Essential Home Brewing. I'm down at the Malt Miller in Swindon today to walk you through your first ever brew from grain to glass. In this video, we're going to talk through the different techniques and tips for achieving the perfect mash. Right, let's get stuck into a brew. We're going to be brewing Elusive Brewing's Level Up, which is in my book and the kit is available on the Malt Miller website. Level Up's interesting because it's got six different grains in it and we hop and dry hop as we go through. So we're going to show you all of that as we run through the process. Now in this bag are the crushed grains for my Level Up recipe. Depending on the system you're using, you might need a different crush to talk to your local home brewing store. The Malt Miller have expertly crushed this for use on the grain father, which we're going to be brewing on today. Before we mash in, there's a couple of important things to tell you. The temperature of the mash is really important. So what happens during the mash is certain enzymes get to work and they help extract the starches within the grain into sugar. Now those enzymes work at various different temperatures, but for a beginner, the best bet is to mash in at around about 65 degrees C. So you can see the hot liquors there ready in the grain father. So we slowly pour those in. Now take your time. The main thing here is to make sure the grains are nicely hydrated. Let's give that a nice stir. Now you, what you want to do is make sure you get all those lumps out. So as we add more grain, you'll notice that that, start, that solution starts to get thicker. So the water to grain ratio is also important in terms of getting a good extraction of those sugars from the grain. Now typically you're looking at around 2.8 to 2.5 to one of water to grain. Incredible, you can't beat mashing in it's one of my favorite parts of the brewing process, particularly if you're brewing a dark beer, you get all those kind of coffee and roast malt flavors and aromas. Keep on stirring and working that mash until you're absolutely certain that all of the grain is nice and wet and you've got no lumps and clumps in the mash. So now we've mashed in, let's talk about the mash rest. Now, What's happening during the rest is those enzymes are getting to work, conversing all of those starches in the grain to sugar. Now, during the rest, we need to hold the mash at a certain temperature. This lovely grain father all in one does that for us magically. If you're working with a cool box mash tun, you need to make sure it's insulated. Maybe if you're in winter, wrap it in a nice towel and keep an eye on the temperature as we go through the mash. The aim is to hold that temperature throughout the hour long mash rest. The next stage of the process is sparging. Now, there's a couple of things happen during the sparge. The first thing is we raise the temperature of the mash bed because that stops the enzymatic reaction, those enzymes that converted the starches to sugars within our mash. The second thing is we're rinsing the grains to get all of the rest of that sugar out and increase the amount of beer we make. So as you remember, the mash temperature was around about 65 degrees C. And as I mentioned, at this stage, we're gonna raise the temperature of the mash bed. And you can see that our water is currently at 75 degrees C. Now the process of sparging on the grain father is very simple. All we're gonna do, we've got our hot liquor tank here. All we're gonna do is open our tap and then just slowly rinse round. So depending on the type of mash tun you've got, there are different methods of sparging. Uh, you can either do a batch sparge or what's known as a fly sparge, but essentially it's the same thing. What we're doing is rinsing the grains through with our sparge water. If you've got a cool box mash tun you can get these nice sparge arms that fit to them and you've, you've probably seen them where you you connect your hose and they they spin around much like on a commercial system and it showers the grains and rinses all of the sugar out of them this method here is more of a batch sparge and we're adding our water slowly and letting that drain through through the mash bed into what's now our kettle So we've finished sparging and we're nearing the boil. Uh, before we reach the boil, we're going to take this moment to have a quick look at the gravity of the wort. Now the gravity refers to the viscosity, that is the amount of sugar that's currently in the wort. That's the, that gives us the potential for the alcohol uh, in the beer. So to use the refractometer, we've taken our sample onto a syringe here. 
We're going to just run some liquid onto the sight glass there. Close that down. And we look through the lens and you'll see in the lens you've got a blue and a white line and where the blue line and the white line meet, that is our current gravity. And that's currently at 1055, which is perfect. So that was a quick overview of the brewing process. If you'd like to learn more, you can buy my book on the Camera Bookshop or the Malt Miller has some great resources on their YouTube channel and their website. Or you can watch the other camera learning discovery videos.